Muslims, the believers, As-salamu alaykum. As-salamu alaykum. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Hayya la salam. Hayya la salam. Hayya la al-falah. Hayya la al-falah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen Na'budu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'firuhu wa nuqiyu bihi azza wa jal Ashadu an la illaha illa Allah ku wa'tuhu la shirika lahu wa ashadu anna muhammadan abu rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa la alihi wa sattihi ajma'in mubat ayol abus limun that is, praise be to Allah, the guardian, evolver, cherisher, keeper, and sustainer of all the worlds, of all the systems of knowledge. We render all praises to him, and we seek his help, and we ask for his forgiveness. We put our faith and trust in him. Mighty and sublime is he. I bear witness and give open testimony that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah and Allah alone, the one and only. There is none like unto him. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's servant, a messenger prophet, and guide to all of humanity for all time. We ask Allah's peace, his blessing, his highest exaltation, be upon Prophet Muhammad, upon his family, his companions, the righteous all, on us, O Muslims, be peace. Dear beloved Muslims, dear believers, I greet you with the best greeting. As-salamu alaykum. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. And welcome to the Salat al-Mubat. Al-Mubat, the followers of excellent salutation to our Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and the peace be on him. Dear beloved Muslims, dear believers, I advise you as I advise myself to fear Allah, to have taqwa for Allah, to reverence him, have regard for him and his creation, and know that he is the creator of all. He creates but was never created. We should fear God as he should be feared. Today, brothers and sisters, I want to speak on an idle mind leads to idle worship. Stay focused on Allah. Allah says in the Quran, Glory to Allah, who did take his servants for a journey by night from the sacred mosque to the furthest mosque, which precincts we did bless, in order that we might show him some of our signs. For he is the one who hears and sees all things. We gave Moses the book and made it a guide to the children of Israel 
commanding, take not other than me as disposer of your affairs. O you that are sprung from those whom we carried in the ark with Noah, verily he was a devotee most grateful. And he gave clear warning to the children of Israel in the book that twice would they do mischief on the earth and be elated with mighty arrogance, and twice would they be punished. And Allah Almighty spoke the truth. So Allah says here that we gave Moses the book and made it a guide to the children of Israel, commanding, take not other than me as disposer of your affairs. And any one of you here today or listening to this khutbah will know of the Ten Commandments in which Prophet Musa received from Allah. At least the first few of those commandments were telling the people of Israel and telling the believers, those who believe in the scripture, that you take no other God other than me, that you not create any images or likenesses of God so that there would be no idol worship yet if you look at anything in today's world and when I say today's world I'm speaking of a world that goes back hundreds if not thousands of years this world has done just the opposite it's taken things in their mind and they worship them. They worship their jobs, they worship money, they worship their children, the numbers of children, the, the sheer numbers of children that some of them have, have given some people some semblance of, of bragging rights. Well, I, I, got, I got 12 children, six grandchildren and, and three great grands. And they say that with a sense of pride. But they forget, they forget about Allah. Now what has, has, in the interest of full disclosure, what has prompted this talk for me is that I read a news story about a individual, a female, who had won an Oscar. And if you know anything about the movie industry or the Oscars, they, if you win one, it's a small gold statue that the winner receives. And they asked this particular individual, where does she keep her Oscar? And her response was, I don't know. It looked like a golden idol to me, so I had my people put it away. Now, initially, when I was preparing for this talk, I was going to tell you who this individual was because she made some other comments relative to this idol, this golden idol, this golden statue that I thought was more, most appropriate for a kutbah. But then I learned, reading another report shortly after that one, they, and I didn't, they talked about the image I only read the headline, and the headline was enough for me to say, well, I can't tell them who this individual was because 
after giving me those statements about idol worship and her own orthodox practice of Judaism, a week later, they got a photograph of her going out showing her underpants. I'm like, well, I can tell them the story about what she said, but, but now you can't have it both ways. You can't claim to believe in God, but you don't believe in the last day. You don't believe that you're going to have to face the judgment. That's not belief. I don't know what it is, but it's not belief. It's confusion. You can't on the one hand say to me that I had my people put it away because it was a golden idol, and then next week they photographing you half naked. You showing your butt. So you, what do you do? You pick and choose what it is you want to follow? That's not the way it works. We gave Moses the book and made it a guide to the children of Israel, commanding, take not other than me as disposer of your affairs. Affairs with an S. That means everything. There was no qualification there. It, it wasn't in the singular. Just take it for one. When 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 the Jews were given the Ten Commandments, it was expected that they will follow all ten of them. Not just one, two, three, eight, six. No, all ten. The same thing applies to us here in our Islam. We can't pick and choose the pillars we want to follow. We can't pick and choose the articles of faith that we want to believe in. We don't have that luxury. Allah doesn't expect that from you. What he expects from you is your obedience. So you make that declaration of la ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah. That's where you begin. There is no God but Allah and Muhammad, the prayers and the peace be on him, is the messenger of Allah. You make that first declaration and, and, and that declaration within itself, if you die tomorrow, would be enough for you to get into the Jannah. But we're here. We're on this side of the dirt. So now you've got to follow the, the other four. So you have to pay your zakat, your charity, your sadaqah. And Allah makes it easy on you. Those of you who are temporarily broke. It's a condition. It's okay. It ain't going to be that way all the time. But once you start classifying yourself as poor, you take yourself out the game. You remove yourself from the process. If you're poor, you'll never rise up to a level of being broke because you, you're poor. Broke is only a temporary condition until tomorrow gets here, until Allah blesses you with the ways and the means in order to be able to take care of yourself and your family. And you move your obedience to this one God and the example that he gave us in Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and the peace be on him, requires you, requires us to make five prayers a day, not three, not four, not two, five prayers a day. That's a requirement. You can't, and, and we should be, we should be thankful. Because during this night journey that I just read to you, during that night journey, Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and the peace be on him, 
ascended up to the throne of the law. And the law told the prophet during that time that, that he wanted his believers to make 500 prayers a day. And if those of you who know the story, as he was coming down and he spoke to Musa, Musa sent him back and, 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 and said, beseech your Lord, you know, to reduce that number because he knows from the vexing of his own people. Moses had the experience. He knew your followers are not going to be able to do that. So it came down to the five. The five prayers of it. And there was a number of times that he went back and forth, but it got down to five prayers. And, and I think it, 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 the, the story goes something to the effect of, you know, Muhammad was told, don't come back no more. This is it. So that's our responsibility. So we have that declaration. We have those prayers. We have that zakat. And thank God, we also have the Siam or the fasting during the month of Ramadan which we have approximately three weeks well actually I think it's a little less than three weeks before the holy month of Ramadan will begin and we will be fasting for the pleasure of God to stay focused on Allah this is where I'm working up towards an idle mind leads to idle worship. Stay focused on Allah. You stay focused on God, you stay focused on Allah, you won't have time to be to find yourself with idle time, with nothing to do. A believer is never in a position where he has nothing to do. A Muslim should never be in a position where he has nothing to do. We don't go on vacation per se. That is a vacation from our spirituality. We don't take time off. We should not find ourselves in a position where we are one day a week Muslims. One day a week and two is. That's our Islam. We come to Juma and we go to both of the Eats. Now, that could or could not be enough to get you into the Jinn. I, I don't know. But I know if you study this religion, if you follow the precepts of the religion, if you use the prophets that Allah has put before us as examples, and the best prophet being Muhammad the prophet, the prayers and the peace be on him, you will not find the time to have an idle mind. You won't be concerned about anything on reality TV because you know that Allah is the only reality. In fact, he wrote a whole surah about it called the reality. He is the only reality. And you will, if, if, if you follow that prescription, then you won't find yourself with this idle time. And if you don't have idle time, you won't find yourself into idle worship. Idle worship does not necessarily mean that you have a statue, that you have created something uh, like an altar in your house. No, that's not what it's that's not what I'm speaking of. When I'm speaking of idle mind leading to idol worship, this idol worship is all the time that you spend doing anything else other than reading your Quran, the Sunnah of the Prophet, or trying to learn more about your religion or how you can help to improve yourself, your family, your community, and the world. If you're not doing those things, then what you have is an idle mind. And you, your, your mind is primed for the devil to come in and cultivate, cultivate you. It 
it is quoted that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It was reported. Uh, it was narrated rather by Abu Huraira. Shaitan puts three knots at the back of the head of any of you if he is asleep. On every knot, he reads and exhales the following words. The night is long, so stay asleep. When one wakes up and remembers Allah, one knot is undone. And when one performs ablution, the second knot is undone. And when one prays, the third knot is undone. And one gets up energetic with a good heart in the morning. Otherwise, one gets up lazy and with a mischievous heart. And you know that. You and I know that. We have a different walk. We have a different talk when we get up for Fajr in the morning. And then you go and make wudu. And then you come up and you make your, 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 uh, your Fajr prayer. And then maybe you may do a little reading, maybe you don't. Maybe you go and lay back down. That's okay. Because you fulfilled your obligation. You got up and you made the Fajr prayer. And should you miss it, your day doesn't feel right. For whatever reason you may have been, maybe you weren't feeling well that day. I don't know. I'm not here to judge myself, and I'm certainly not here to judge you. Have I missed some Fajr prayers? That's a question. But we ain't Catholics. Ain't no confession booth here. That's none of your business. That's between me and Allah. But remember, Allah says in Quran that every message is a passage of time. I've given the message to you, and I've given it to myself. But we're, we're human. Allah understands your weakness, weaknesses. He created us. And he's told us in Quran that his mercy far exceeds his wrath. But I'm saying to you, don't test him. We don't, we don't want to, you, you don't want to play a game like that. Be consistent. And you have that opportunity to work on that consistency, to remove that sort of idol worship that I'm speaking of, where, where, where whatever reality TV you find yourself captivated by, whether it's just a food show all day long, or, or, or something dealing with some family all day long, or some group of housewives all day long, or game shows all day long, or even those of you who, who, who don't find anything wrong with spending your entire day watching and listening to the news. That's idol worship. God is in control. What do you care about the weather? All you really want to know is it going to be cold or hot. You can't do nothing to change it. Well, what are you going to do to change it? Nothing. With all the things that are happening in the world, how are you applying that information? In fact, you get too caught up in this idol worship. That's the whole point of it. It's to keep you distracted away from God. So that you don't care anything about occupied Palestine. You don't even understand how that came to be. Because you're too focused on Something else. And I'm not saying you personally. It applies to all of us. I find myself distracted. That I'm willing to confess. Why? Because I'm just like you. And you're just like me. 
So I know if I get distracted, the difference may be when I recognize my distraction, I cut it off. And sometimes I find myself having to say to me, I thought you said you wasn't going to watch that anymore. Because you fall, you fall back. You know that for a fact, particularly you men. How many times you done bumped your head over the same issue over and over and over again? But you keep going back to Allah, and, and one time you're going to go back and you're going to beg for this forgiveness, and Allah is going to forgive you, but Allah's forgiveness is not like anyone else's forgiveness. Brother, you did me wrong. Well, I forgive you. Well, well thank you, brother. We, we can move on now. That ain't the same forgiveness as Allah. When Allah forgive you, Allah forgive you when you will never go back and do it again. You may forgive me, I may forgive you. Still, I'm subject to do it again. Maybe not to you, but to somebody else. But once Allah forgives you, you stay forgiven. But you got to ask for it. It ain't coming automatically. You got to strive for it. And that's what Ramadan does for you. It allows you that opportunity in them 30 days. And you want the reward quick? Allah gives it to you quick. The first 10 days, He extends His mercy to you. You can count them. Just take a calendar. And on the day, just put a hymn there for mercy. Because that's what you're going to get. The first 10 days. And on day 11, now you're going to get his forgiveness. Forgiveness for what? For everything that you did between the last Ramadan and this one. Well, I, you know, I, I didn't pay my zakat. You forgive him. I, I didn't make all my salat. You forgive him. And then, those last 10 days, depending on the calendar, it could be nine. Don't, don't get all twisted up into that. You, you'll know when the party is. When the end comes, you'll know when, that, when it's time for that. So don't, don't worry about whether it's going to be 29 days or 30 days. All right? But on them last 10 days, Allah protects you from the penalty. It can't possibly get any better than that. You get mercy, you get forgiveness, and you get protection from the hellfire. How could it get any better for anybody? And that's why we should all be encouraging even non-Muslims to get a benefit from the fast. During this particular month, especially in this particular month, And I should be able, you should be able to check with me and I with you. And I can tell you from past experience the blessings that we'll all receive from Allah during this month. Blessings that you won't have to wait for. These are not blessings that are going to be put on hold. You will see blessings coming from God during this month should you devote yourself to the remembrance of God during this Ramadan. Remember, this fast is for Allah. This is a fast for God. You don't have to tell anybody that you're not fasting. There are exceptions for people not to fast. But it's not your place to tell someone that you fall in the exception. You don't have to make excuse. If you and I are together and we're fasting and, I, and, and, and you step off to the side to drink some water or drink some orange juice, I don't know what your condition is. I'm not going to judge you. That's between you and God. 
Now, your responsibility, if we are fasting, is not to drink or eat or do whatever you got to do around me. But you may have a condition that requires you to eat. What if you find yourself out working in construction, 100 degree heat, and you about to pass out? You don't think Allah wants you to take a sip of water? There's nothing that I can find that requires you to die during Ramadan. You have a medical condition that requires you to take medication. And when you take the medication, you gotta, you know, you gotta have water pass through your throat. That's none of my business. That's none of my personal business, but Allah allows for that. He doesn't want you to die for the fast. But it's how you commit yourself to it. And he gives you ways and means to be able to make it up. Okay, so you can't fast. Can you feed 10 people? Well, well no, Allah, I, I don't have Can you feed three? Well, yes, I, I, can, I think I can feed. Then feed three. Don't make it hard on yourself. That's not what this is about. So you get, if you carry it too far, now you're going to find yourself in a position where you think that there's something that's bigger than God. And now you're falling back down into idol worship again. But Allah says, Allah says in, in, in the Quran, Take not other than me as disposer of all of your affairs, whatever they may be. Let us uh, let us pray for forgiveness. Alhamdulillah. Allah says he has created the heavens and the earth for just him. Far is he above having the partners they ascribe to him. He has created man from a sperm drop, and behold, this same man becomes an open dispute. Allah is speaking to your ingratitude. He knows you better than you know yourself. Alif Lam Ra. These are the ayats of revelation of a Quran that makes things clear. Again and again will those who disbelieve wish that they had bowed to Allah's will in Islam. Leave them alone to enjoy the good things of this life and to please themselves. Let false hope amuse them. Soon will knowledge undeceive them. Never did we destroy a population that had not a term decreed and assigned beforehand. And the law the mightiest spoke the truth. So, brothers and sisters, I encourage all of us on the eve of the weeks that are preceding this holy month of Ramadan for us to begin now to focus our attention on Allah will make the transition into this holy month where we have 
certain obligation to complete uh, more specifically. Um, if, if it's not obvious to you by now, at least making your five prayers a day, if you can, to read at least one thirtieth of the Quran each day so that by the end of this holy month, you would have completed the entire Quran. Uh, most Qurans, for those of you who don't know, or this may be your, your first fast, uh, most Qurans will contain um, a numeral marking that will tell you when you have completed one thirtieth, two thirtieths, three thirtieths, four thirtieths, etc. So you don't have to guess. Have have I done that? Um, there are other with technology the way it is now. You can go online, and there are many you know Muslim sites that you can put in which version of Quran you have, and they will give you the page numbers that you can read from one to whatever page and know that you have completed, uh, you know, one third. Now, the, the, the easiest thing for you to know is that when you read Al-Fatiha, that's one third. You've done. You've got that out the way. Then now you've got to work on the other 29. Because it's said that those seven oft-repeated verses represent the whole of the Quran. So, once you read Al Fatiha, you, you got one down and twenty nine more to go. I, I think that's I think that's easy enough. Okay. Um, I would also suggest to those of you, uh, you know, where this may be new to you, or you know, you're considering fasting with some of the Muslims during this holy month that uh, to whatever extent possible you remove uh, your eyes and your ears you know away from the television away from the radio uh, your focus needs to be on on God um, so there'll be for at least the next 30 days There'll be no Facebook time. There'll be no, you know, searching the internet, you know, for something nonsensical. I mean, you know, nothing that's going to be of any benefit to you. That's not to say that you should not use the technology, but don't let the technology use you. God gave you intelligence. That's the one thing that separates us from everything else in creation. If you're now going to give that intelligence over to the technology, then you have you are unknowingly participating in idol worship. There's nothing, there's nothing on the internet that you can't fit for yourself. And just think about this. What did you do before there was an internet? Before there was all of this technology and these, these dumb phones that they try to convince you that it's a smartphone, but it's really a dumb phone, because it turns you into a dumb. You, it, 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 it allows you to be able to go to it and pick out and choose anything you want to choose. Now, there's some good in that technology. I'm not disputing that, but I don't worship it. I keep I use it, for example, to remind me when my next salad is. So right now, I've got my phone set at 4 o'clock, 4 a.m. My alarm goes off 4 a.m. every morning. And every now and then, I got to go back to the manual paper, you know, the one, the, the one that gives you the prayer times, because I need to change my clock. Because the prayer times are, you know, depending on the time of the year, they're always moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 
Now, if I looked 30 days ago, if I was able to do it, if you looked at my phone 30 days ago, my phone, my fudger was set at 5, maybe 5.15. Because fudger wasn't happening until like 5.40. That ain't the case now. You know, I got trapped one day and looked up and, you know, fudger was like at, at 4.04. Well, how is that going to work if I'm getting up at 4? <laughs> my alarm is going off at 4 o'clock. Ain't possible for me to go down and make voodoo. You know, and then be up to make fudge. But we make those adjustments. And should I forget? Because you always got to be charging these, these so-called smartphones. So they ain't that smart. Because if they were smart, they would charge themselves. But they need me to charge it. So who's smart? So, but, but, but oftentimes, when, when that fails, or my phone may not be on my person, because I don't carry it around like it's an appendage. I don't have two hands, two feet, and a phone. Don't work that way. But because I've been given the intelligence, I make sure that in my office, I have the prayer times that's written down on a piece of paper. That's what we got prayer calendars down there for. I use them. If you see me get them, I might take two or three. I put one in my truck. I put one in 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 my in my um, uh, uh, in my office, and then I have another one in my bedroom where I sleep. I don't want to be left deficient, <coughs> so when it's time for me to pray, I don't have an excuse. If my phone should fail me, because I can always say, "Oh man, my battery's out." should be time for door. Then I'll look on the thing and I'll see what time door is supposed to be in. I'll, I'll you know, look on the prayer time and say, oh, okay, so I'm good. So I remind myself, during this month, we want to make sure that we do those things. This is the time for us to study. This is the time for us to, to, learn, um, to learn new prayers. And we may have to, when we're learning new prayers, we may have to start off slow. When I'm trying to learn a prayer, I start off slow because I try to learn it in English. Ain't no sense in me reciting you something in Arabic and then I can't tell you what it says. We're not Arabs. And that's not putting down, that, that, that's not putting down the Quranic language. That's using my intelligence. If God gave me an Arabic tongue, then you would expect for me to know Arabic. But before I can get there, before I can get to the Arabia, at least let me know what it is I'm saying. So that when I'm saying Bismillah, I can say to her, what does Bismillah mean? Oh, I don't know, but, but, but that's what I say. Huh? No. You need to be able to say it. So for those new ones of you and some of you that have been in this community for years but never got around to doing learn al fatiha in english first learn it in english first and then sometimes from time to time when i get up here i will say al fatiha in the arabia and i do it in the beginning of the tape because of the way the tape is set up it doesn't the tape doesn't allow you to go to different cuts. We could do that, but it would take somebody sitting in a room somewhere listening to the cook bar, and they would have to press a button to mark, because we can mark tracks on this tape. So that those of you who use it as a study guide, you won't have to go all the way back to the beginning just to get to the one part that you want to hear again. And maybe one day we'll grow into that where we can actually have it in tracks so that somebody that, that, that's operating, they can press a button, and then when you get home, you, if, if all you want to hear is track three, because there's something in track three that maybe someone is saying a du'a in Arabic that you want to learn, and, they, and it's somewhere around track three. Okay, well, you can go right to three, and you can repeat three as many times as you want to. But right now, you got to try to you got to go back and it get, takes you all the way back to the beginning. You know, and that's that. If, if, and, and I'm going to 
you know, I'm going to make this suggestion to us. Maybe we can figure out a way how we can do that, where it's going to be more helpful to those of you who, who get the tapes. All right? Um, last but not least, I want to read a couple of duas. I, I do want to uh, tell, give us this. Um, This is this is a dua that was recommended to us by the Wujeti, Imam W. D. Muhammad, uh, that we should we should say when we break our fast. And should I have the opportunity to uh, speak to us again, either before. Ramadan, before the month of Ramadan, or, before, or during the month of Ramadan, uh, inshallah, I remember to put this dua in the first part of my talk so that you can have it readily available for yourself. But when you are breaking your fast, this is what uh, Imam Bedi Muhammad has suggested that we say. Um, Bismillah. In God, I have believed. On God, I put my trust with the provisions provided by God. I break my fast. And tomorrow, in the month of Ramadan, I intend to fast. And then you can say Bismillah and eat your dates or drink your water or any kind of fruit uh, that you may have then it is required of you to go and make the um, three rakahs of the Maghrib prayer, Maghrib Salat prayer, uh, then after which time you are free to eat until you see the, the thin light of, of dawn the next morning. And Allah in his, his mercy allows you get up during the month of Ramadan and take an early meal that is called Sahur. You don't want you starving through the whole day. Now remember, and when you do it, you, you, you not, you, you're not to partake of a meal of a lumberjack. You know, you're not getting ready to go and work out in the field and you don't need a half a dozen eggs and, you know, with six sausages and, and a half a loaf of bread you know, and a half gallon or something to drink. That, that, that's, that, that's, not, that's not the fast of Ramadan. Imam Debbie Muhammad also taught us that, that, that during this month, it, it was suggested that we partake of a poor man's meal. That's what we should do. We shouldn't follow some of these other, uh, uh, these other societies that, that, you know, start to eat at Maghrib and don't stop until it's time for fight. I mean, that, that's ridiculous. You know, and then you, 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 you're bloated, you know, all, you know, all for the rest of the night and day, you know, and, and, until Maghrib comes around again. You, 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 you're not, that, that's not the, the correct way to fast. Well, well the, law, the law says in Quran that, that, that we should eat, you know, until we see the thin light. Okay. Well, you were also instructed by Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and the peace he rendered, that what you eat, that, that a third of that is reserved for your stomach. To keep it clear. And if you don't, and if you don't think that is the proper way to eat, don't take my word for it. Go ask a medical physician, a non-Muslim medical physician, a non-Muslim. So it won't be anything to slant it or taint it. They'll tell you. And I guess they got doctors that deal with digestion. You don't eat until nothing else can get in your stomach. You're setting yourself up for disease. Your food has to digest. 
if it doesn't, if it sits on your stomach, it's like, it's like a prisoner making wine in the penitentiary. All it's doing is fermenting in your stomach. Huh? So you got to be careful. And this is and, and this is the time that we need we need to make sure to change our diets. If you drink a lot of sodas, cut them out. I, I like coffee. Black coffee. The black of the belt. During Ramadan, cut it out. Even when I break my fast, no coffee. What's the point? I want to please God. I want to show God that I'm willing to make a sacrifice. So any other habits that I've developed that I think I can change, I'm going to sacrifice for the pleasure of Allah to change them. I got a habit of, you know, wanting to watch the 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock news. Cut it out. World ain't going to change because I don't watch the news. And if it's an emergency that happens and I need to know about, believe me, you'll know. You might turn on television to find out, you'll know. If it's, if it's, if, if it's that disastrous, oh, you'll know about it. And then my intelligence will tell me, well, you better turn on the TV to see what's going on. You know, listen to the radio. But during the month of Ramadan, those habits that I usually have, I break them for at least 30 days. At least 30 days. And then when after the Eid, I try my best to. Now, do I go back to drinking coffee? Yes, I do. Ain't nothing wrong with drinking coffee. But those things that I improved on, I want to see those things continue. And that's that's what the hope is. And then we, we pray that Allah accepts our fast. Because if it is accepted by Allah, then all of your sins are forgiven. I'm going to read this short dua and then we can uh, then we can uh, make salah. Oh Allah, I cannot manage this life myself without you. Please make of my life what you want it to be, what you prefer it to be. Do not allow me to act on my own. Help me to act only in obedience to you, Allah. We hear and we obey. Forgive us. We are asking for your forgiveness. Akim Asalaam. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Ashadu wa la alayhi wa Allah, Ashadu wa la alayhi wa Allah, Ashadu anu Muhammadan Rasulullah, Ashadu anu Muhammadan Rasulullah, Hayla Salah, Hayla Salah, Hayla Salah, Hayla Salah, Cut the comments of Salah, Cut the comments of Salah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Maliki Yomidin Iyaka Nabadu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdinna Sarata Mustaqim Surat Al-Ladina Hanta Ilayhim La Yuhiru Mawidubi Alayhim Walat Dawin Allah, who is 
الله أكبر سمي الله مخمرة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك يوم الدين إياك النبد وإياك النستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنت إليهم غيرهم ما أمد إليهم ولا تضالين قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شعر الوسوس الناس التي يوسوس في صدور الناس من جنة والناس الله أكبر سمي الله محمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تكبير الله أكبر